I just think that that's way too much to make Jada responsible for. I just think everybody makes Jada responsible for every decision that they feel like is a bad decision in these people's relationship. And I also think it's really weird that there are so many people asking why they just don't divorce. And I'm like, why don't y'all ask y'all fucking parents and y'all aunts and grandmothers and uncles and grand? Why don't y'all ask y'all family members that? Because in real life, in real life, people do not divorce once they've been together 20, 30 years. People do not break up like that. They may live separately. They may do their own thing. But they're not breaking up millions and millions and millions of dollars in home for what why we don't dislike each other that much them staying married lets me know that they like each other way more than people think because people really feel like jada can't stand will and i'm like no i think jada made a lot of uh, uh internal sacrifices for will like a lot of women do for their husbands and it's so weird that there are so many black women that have such a dislike for jada y'all want to believe that she could have stopped will from slapping chris uh uh rock and but then y'all are also the same women that want your husband to defend you if, if you are disrespected by another man and that's what he's supposed to do y'all are very confused about how y'all feel when these people relationship was not being shown to everybody i remember it y'all for years people speculated on their relationship at nauseam at nauseam y'all questioned whether will smith was fucking Dwayne martin Y'all question whether he was fucking Eva Mendez, whether he was fucking Margot Robbie. Y'all have questioned Will Smith fucking with damn near everybody he's either been close with or had a, a, a movie with, with the exception of DJ Jazzy Jeff. Okay? The only person y'all ain't never thought he fucked. Because him and Dwayne Martin was cool for like a, a nice little bit of time in the, in the 90s, in the early 2000s. And it was like, you know, I kept hearing all over the place everybody thought they was fucking. But it was cool. Nobody was telling Jada, this is embarrassing. You should leave that nigga. They keep saying he fucking his friend. Nobody ever said that Jada should leave Will. They just stayed quiet about it. They loved it. They was their favorite Hollywood couple. Okay? All of this shit goes down and over the years, y'all just for some reason feel like Jada is the worst when the August Alcina situation comes out. The August Alcina situation comes out and everybody loses their fucking mind because how dare her shit get put on blast before his, right? He's the man. I read so many comments where y'all really think that Jada wasn't going to have a good life if it wasn't for Will. He, he gave you this great life and you're just so ungrateful. And it's like... First the fuck all, the lady didn't really want the life in the first place. And that's a decision she going to have to deal with, okay? The fact that she dishonored herself when she made certain decisions. But all, and I'm going to say all because I do believe all women dishonor themselves in one way or another over this concept of having a husband and some fucking kids. Please stop playing with me. All of y'all all of y'all dishonor yourselves at one moment or another behind dick. So please stop acting like Jada not wanting to be married at the beginning was the biggest red flag of them all. Because I, I saw a video today about how Will couldn't see all of Jada's red flags. Even though they talk about how they both have rumors of them being outside the marriage. Nobody says red flags that Jada should have saw. Mind you, Jada has been the consummate supportive wife in the situation with Cherie. They go on vacations together without Jada. All kind of shit has taken place. And now I'm finding out that the nigga I feel like intentionally probably will go out of his way to low-key embarrass her on some level. Because that's what that gives to me. Playing the Jason's Lyric movie in front of your grandmother when that's like some of the most raunchiest sex scenes in any fucking movie of that time. Like there are so many other movies. You you could have picked so many other movies. And I, and I feel like he probably did his dirt and she just dealt with it for the longest. And then when eventually she just had so much contempt because she's stuck in this situation where I have to keep putting on. She's still putting on. Even with them being separated for seven fucking years, the reason why she said they haven't divorced is because they said they would not. Well, Will said they wouldn't do that. She said she they couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to like come to terms with that. I still wasn't comfortable with that. That tells me on some level you and this man still like 
or fuck with each other on some level. Everybody, oh, it's just because they don't want to break up their assets. That's a part of it. But I think it's weird that there are so many of y'all that feel like a person will make all of those eternal sac- internal sacrifices over a 20 plus year period and they don't really love or like the person. I think that's like so disrespectful to their, like I even saw somebody's video was titled their, their wedding, their marriage is a sham. How? How is it a sham after 25 years Two kids and we still not getting a divorce. <laughs> How is that a sham? What's a what's a real marriage to y'all? Let me know because I feel like a lot of y'all that have so much to say. Have you seen a marriage that lasted long? Because if you have, you'll notice that at some point your grandparents are no longer sleeping in the same bed. My nigga, my grandparents lived in two separate rooms when I was growing up. So I don't understand how y'all don't understand People being married and and not being in a relationship romantically, but also not wanting to divorce. I don't understand how y'all don't understand that. I don't. Because I feel like it's such a normal occurrence in life. And I really don't like the way y'all want to make Jada the narcissistic bad guy just based off the August Alcina situation and she didn't want to get married. Uh, There's so many women that really didn't want to get married that were forced into it. A lot of y'all fucking grandmamas that accidentally got pregnant for some nigga had to marry him and didn't really want to. And what does that mean exactly? That means nothing. It means nothing. It's really, really weird the way y'all handle these people. But she said they've been separated for seven years. And if you think about it, they told us that when the August Alcina situation happened. When they sit down and did the red table talk because y'all were talking about their business for dear God because August Alcina came out and put the shit on blast. Jada didn't say anything. Will didn't say anything. August Alcina said some shit. And then they decided to come and comment on the situation. I think because they felt like Jada was getting beat up so bad and they really weren't together. They really weren't together. Okay. So they both sit down at the table, probably after smoking and drinking. Cause who the fuck wants to have to explain our personal life to fucking strangers. But here we all having to do that. Y'all think it's about their contempt for one another, not realizing it may be their contempt for the fact that they got to explain shit to you motherfuckers because it's vital to Will's career, which we're always having to make concessions for Will's career. Okay. She said they wasn't together when August Alcina thing happened and they also wasn't together when he slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. Anybody that listened to most of the book would have heard him talk about the abusive relationship that his father had with the mother and how Will never defended his mother to his father and then had had to take care of the daddy when the daddy got old and sick and shit. So, yeah, he had a lot of resentment behind not showing up as the tough guy when needed. Anybody that watched Fresh Prince can recognize that. So anytime this man decides to get up and walk on a fucking stage at the Oscars to slap Chris Rock, it's because of him. And y'all blaming Jada. There's people saying Jada should have stopped him. What is little bitty Jada supposed to do to stop big old Will Smith from getting up and smacking the shit out of somebody? What's wrong with y'all? Y'all don't make sense. A lot of y'all don't make sense to me. Y'all hate women and I want y'all to just admit it. I also want a lot of y'all to admit that you don't know Will, but you view Will as so much better than every man that you know. The fact that Jada is not sucking from his balls as if he's God's gift every minute of every day. Y'all are offended by that because y'all wish y'all had a man like Will and y'all think she's squandering this, this opportunity. That's how a lot of y'all feel. A lot of y'all want to fuck Will. A lot of y'all wish y'all had a Will. And so y'all are mad at Jada because y'all think Jada is not handling the nuts properly when she's sucking the dick. Like, y'all are weird. Y'all are weird. At first, y'all wanted them people to break up. (laughs) At first, y'all wanted them people to break up. They tell y'all they separated and y'all still mad. I need somebody to explain to me what the problem is. I really do. To me, it feels like a lot of people just want to be mad about shit that don't have nothing to do with them. Okay? And I saw uh, uh, I saw the title to Tasha's video. Tasha said that, that Jada would do anything, put her family secrets on, on blast for a check. Like, that's real cute, Tasha. But we know that's not what the fuck is going on because Will came out with a book too. So Will can come out with a book and talk all his shit, but Jada can't, right? 
Yeah, y'all always want the women to shut the fuck up, but when the men talk, we should all just be cool with that, right? It's cool for the men to speak their piece and, and, and have their books and tell their story, but whenever the women do it, y'all want Jada to just stop talking. Y'all want Jada to just shut up because y'all don't like Jada's truth. I want everybody to unfollow Jada, block her on Twitter, and, and, and please... Get off this lady's clit if you don't want to hear what she got to say. Because y'all be under the post listening to the whole video so you can comment. Why is she telling us this? Why are you listening? Why are you watching? Why are you engaging with the content? People have been posting about them people all fucking day so that y'all can come and comment and hate on them. It's weird. It's weird. It's a social phenomenon. Why y'all think Will is some some fucking innocent victim, some frail, innocent victim, the man that plays fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, plays some of the strongest characters in the world. Like, he plays superheroes, Hancock and Muhammad Ali, and goes through the strenuous physical, uh, uh, you know, practice and training to actually be able to do this. He's not pussyfooting around and shit at all. That man is very, very intentional about everything he does. And I think he was intentional about getting Jada. Regardless to the fact that Jada didn't want the nigga, I think he was intentional about getting her, impregnating her, and marrying her, whether she wanted it or not. And I think she do. I think she do love him. I think she loved the life they created with each other. But essentially, that does not mean that she needs to continue to be something that she's not so that his story can look good for y'all. Because that's what y'all want. Y'all want Jada to continue to pretend to be something that she's not so that everybody will feel comfortable with the picture of their relationship. When really, that's insane for y'all to even want that of them people. It's insane. Right. Like they've. Like, they could have scrolled past her post. They want him to come out and say she used him for his money and that she was mean to him and kept him from his first wife, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, the, shit. Cherie, Cherie did not want that nigga. He wanted Cherie, and Cherie did not want him no more. She said, I'm done, Willard. I'm done, Willard. And that lady meant that shit. Y'all really got the shit twisted. Y'all really do. So Will likes to do shit like plan out somebody's birthday three years in advance so he can have this huge moment where it seems like he's doing something for you, but it's really so that he can get the praise for it. It's a means to an end. Yeah, I'm going to do all of this for Jada, but it's really so I can be praised for doing this really big, amazing thing that nobody else would think to do. And <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that's really what it is. Like, you that's... Think, you would think so. No, you would, but no, you know why? Because it almost feels like a, it's a control mechanism. And I also feel like when you've been with somebody for so long, by the time you get to year 25, like you already know what they bullshit is, even when other people don't know what they bullshit is. So if I know that you like to ignore what I want, like for instance, we're going to argue to the day I die on this Moesha shit, right? Moesha wanted a fucking Jeep. Moesha did everything Frank wanted her to do to get that fucking Jeep. And Frank still gave her a Saturn. He could afford the Jeep, babe. She went and bought a used Jeep. He could afford the Jeep. He didn't want to give her a Jeep. He wanted to give her a car that he could probably write off on his taxes or whatever the fuck. He didn't want to have to get her a personal vehicle. He wanted it to be something attached to his business so he can get the write off because he fucking cheap. Look at his haircut. So, to me... Niggas will do shit that you, everybody else will feel like, oh my God, it's so amazing. But really what it is, is their attempt to get all of this love and praise from doing something for you. It's the same thing as whenever people do shit so that they can post it on social media. And you'll be like, man, you ain't do that shit for them people. You did that shit for social media. But anyway, so according to Daily Mail, Jada Pinkett Smith is set to reveal in an interview premiering later this morning that she and her husband, Will Smith, have secretly been separated for the last seven years. Jada admitted that she and Will, 55, have been separated since 2016 and were living separately when her husband slapped comedian Chris Rock at the Oscars in 2022 over a joke that had been made about his wife's bald hairstyle. Well, still, she said, we're still figuring it out. Jada says... 
of the state of their marriage. We've been doing some really heavy duty work together. We just got deep love for each other and we are going to figure out what that looks like for us. I don't even understand. And then look, 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 people that ain't got no husband. Poor Will, shut up. Oh my God, y'all are just so fucking thirsty. Please take this man's nuts out of your throat. 16, you and Will decided that you were going to live completely separate lives. Oh, hell, yes. It was not a divorce on paper, right. but it was a divorce. divorce. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> yes. y'all have been apart. Yeah. But in public, the couple who married in 1997 denied the gossip about their marriage. Say what? Jada Pinkett reveals Chris Rock asked her on a date and says joke about her hair is what comedians do. I mean, that's what comedians do, says Jada. I would just have to say that I am not really here to make any judgment on how people decide to express themselves and express their art. I'll say that several several times I've had my feelings hurt, for sure. I've had my feelings hurt a lot by Chris. But at the end of the day, too, being in the spotlight, it comes with the territory. Jada also reveals in her book that Chris once asked her out on a date. He called me and basically he was like, I'd love to take you out. And I was like, what do you mean? Jada Pinkett tells people. So yeah, it seems to me like the reason why Jada was the butt of Chris's jokes is because he couldn't get none. Because you tried to holler at that lady and she wasn't interested. And I feel like I already said that. I said the way this man has gone after her, the way this man has made it his business to do whole fucking HBO episodes of his Chris Rock show in order to embarrass her, yeah. Is giving you mad because you wanted her and she didn't want you. A lot of you men act like bitches like that when y'all can't get y'all way with a woman. So, no, it's not surprising. We all know what it is. And at the end of the day, once again, it was not her responsibility to stop Will from smacking this nigga. And I'm going to tell y'all how I feel. The nigga deserved to be smacked. You acting like a bitch because that lady didn't like you. Get over it. It's been like 30 fucking years already. What's wrong with you? It's been like 30 years. How many times you gonna make fucking jokes about a woman that didn't want you? Like, y'all niggas will never let a bitch live it down. She did not want you. That's it. Why are you this mad about it? You fucking Chris Rock. The white girls love you. The white girls would love to suck Pookie's dick. Why are you over here still mad at Jada over some shit from 1990-something? Y'all gotta go watch Shout out to Layla Lynn. Layla Lynn did a video showing how many times Chris Rock has come for Jada over the years, down to inviting her on his show to speak about the Million Women's March that happened in 1997, playing a, a clip from her speech and everything, all to stop her in mid-fucking sentence so he can have all of these streamers and balloons coming down. And she's like, wait, what's happening? What's going on? And he says, Jada, you've just gone 20 minutes without mentioning Will Smith which is such a slap in the face because people asked her about Will but to be clear that fucking lady had been famous since like 1991 it's real disrespectful it, it like it, it's just real disrespectful just because you don't want to allow somebody access to you, how they will drag you publicly in the fucking media for decades. Tommy Davidson recalls Will Smith approaching him in a trailer, trying to beat him up for kissing Jada Pinkett while filming. Oh Me yes, um, we were just watching Woo. Let's see what they had to say. Um, Will had a run in. Yeah, that, wasn't you? Yeah, Carl, you try. Yeah, yeah. You try to put his wife in a lip lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't find out that for 15 years because he never told me that. See, he came, into the, he came into the trailer and I was sitting down, right? He's standing over me like this. And he's like, I don't appreciate that, man. I don't appreciate that. And I'm like, well, what you talking about? I always know to play it off. Right. You know what I mean? Right? And I'm going, what's going on, man? Tell me what's happening, man. And since he was standing yeah. and I was sitting, I was a real nice fella. Ah! I mean, that, that's, that's about I mean, physics, right? right.
you was gonna be a nice fella whether you was standing or not, Tommy Davidson, because Will it was bigger than your ass. Right, right. So I'm like, you know, oh man, what's going on, man? I mean, hey man. He's like, I don't appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? And Jada's going, Will, Will, I'm saying, but I'm, I mean, what, what's happening, man? Now you tell me what's happening. Hmm? Hmm? You don't wanna do oh, that. Oh, he definitely did that shit. Tommy not lying at all, babe. But Tommy did the hmm. Tommy bit his lip, mm -hmm. like Will be doing when he get upset. That shit is hilarious. Yes, yeah. he bite his bottom lip. Mm -hmm. He about to do something bad. He, he pressed him about um, kissing um, her doing whoop. Will had to run in, they do something. something right. So I'm, uh, so I'm like, you know, I did the I did the whole. You remember the snake? Yeah, I did the snake. Well, well, what you know, and got up. Right. And then I was like, you know, so what are you talking about, man? And I was still in that. Posture. So you didn't really know what he was actually talking I about. I didn't, but I know what he was doing. Right. You so knew I was like, what he Come was on. Man. I mean, what's up? Just tell me what's up. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know what's up. You, you did. Know what's know. Up. So finally I just said, This is a small place and people are here. You want we should talk about it. Right. Me and you outside, because it right. looks like you gonna need to get something off, off your, your chest. chest. Right. right. And then Jada was like, oh no, no, no. No, <laughs> no, y'all. No. Jada, Jada sound like she was trying to save you from getting your ass whipped. <laughs> Nah, y'all. And I was like, what do you mean, nah, y'all? Tell him. Tell him. And that was the end of that. Right. Like, do Tell something, me. right? So I'm, so I'm like... Listen, that sounds like what Jay-Z did when it came to Bun B and the rest of y'all doing videos with Beyonce. <laughs> that sounds just like what Jay-Z did. Jay-Z told y'all, don't, hey, 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 don't, don't stand next to the bitch in a video, okay? You tape your shit at a different time than she tape her shit. I don't want nobody seeing y'all in a video together and thinking that y'all go together. <laughs> well, y'all in a whole movie. And then Jada had to support him when he had his sex scenes um, during, uh, uh, what you call them? They talked about that, like how Jada had been on set before, I believe, when he had sex scenes and stuff like that with other women. And she was supportive of him. So to hear him threatening people on the set of her movies. Dead Mike? Oh, yeah, he he wasn't going to press dead mic like that. Alan Payne, <laughs> oh, he might have pressed Alan Payne like that. He's still taller than that nigga. That nigga was built, but Alan Payne is short, so he might have still got pressed. But he was just like, you know, like muscle, like, you know, muscle-bound nigga. Child, he might have had Wesley with him that day. <laughs> Can you imagine what really be going on in black Hollywood sometimes with some of these people? I believe everything Tommy's saying. I believe what he's saying. I, I believe that Will was on that. I feel like that's probably a part of the reason why Jada decided to stop acting. Um, because it was just easier, you know what I'm saying, to just go and chill and be Will's wife than to continue to have him do this type of shit that would probably make it hard for her to, to work with people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. <laughs> I was just thinking, like... I'm just saying, y'all, it has probably been very difficult um, for her over the years if he was doing shit like that, considering a lot of the people that she had love interest with. I can't wait to read Jada's book. I think her book is going to be really good. I think Jada has a lot of a lot, a lot, lot of wisdom to give, a lot of lessons that she's probably learned as a woman. And I just can't wait to hear her full story and to hear everything that she's been through from her own perspective. Um, I think the book will do well for her and Eddie Murphy, sweetheart, Eddie Murphy. Um, but yes, y'all, I want y'all to get off Jada's neck. I do. I want y'all to get that lady a break. I want y'all to get off that lady neck. <laughs> I want y'all to just relax, relate and release. Will is not going to be your man, whether he's married to Jada or not. You still not going to get a will, whether Jada got will or not. So there's no real reason for y'all to continue to be as upset with Jada as y'all are. Like, that's that lady husband, whether they are separated or not. He is a grown ass fucking man that makes his own decisions. And when and if he wants to leave Jada, he will do that. Up until then, the way y'all are online acting like as if this woman that is twice as small as him is abusing him is ridiculous to me. And y'all make me hate it here. Y'all do. So, Cameron. Cameron, somebody gave washed up rappers suits and podcast mics. And here we are. Let's listen to what you got. much more to say. Sean Payton, you tried. Russell Wilson, get rid of your girl. That's the only, only suggestion I got for you. <laughs> yeah, I don't got nothing else wow. to do for you. He can't get rid of Sierra. 
you want to win. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how men joke about how they don't value women and they value things that don't really matter in the grand scheme of things long term? <laughs> it's so funny, Cameron. Let's have this conversation again in about 30 years when you're older. <laughs> Let's have this conversation then, you lonely, bitter old bitch. Like, I'm sorry, but his energy is giving bitter old bitch. Mace, why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> Let's keep those dentures in. Why don't we? <laughs> you want to win. That's what I told you. Right? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. It's two things. It depends on what kind of ring you want. <laughs> yeah, it's the kind of ring you want. Saying that he needs to leave his wife, who is now pregnant with their third child, um, that he should leave her for a Super Bowl ring, and he already has Super Bowl ring. Like he already has one or two, right? I, I can't recall exactly how many, but Russell already has Super Bowl rings, sweetheart. Why would he like? And and we know y'all, we know it's a joke, but we want y'all to understand these jokes come from a serious place. These niggas don't value women. These niggas are disrespectful, and they're barely keeping their dentures in their lonely mouths. Okay. Make sure that Beijing isn't dripping on that expensive ass suit. You want another washed up rapper that I can't stand? Fabo, fabulous, with a little quote. We don't know if he's actually talking about, you know, Emily B, but we assume he's talking about El Emily B. He said, I walked away because you were busy finding faults in me while I was busy overlooking yours. Be where you're celebrated, not tolerated. And I love the comments because this is one of the times where the comments really, really hit home. Again, audacity. You knocked her teeth out. You knocked that lady teeth out and she took you back. We won't ever let you forget that because in real life, if you would have knocked my teeth out, and my dad were still alive, you wouldn't be. If you would have knocked my teeth out. You knocked that lady teeth out and pulled a weapon on her dad. You really should have came up missing by now. And I think the only reason you haven't is because you're a famous rapper. But to be real money, you should have been touched and you really shouldn't be able to be on the internet right now making comments like these. Because you are a man who will punch his wife in the face and knock out her teeth. A person that is weaker than you, a person that probably was not an aggressor towards you, and that is what you did. We really don't want to hear about how she or anybody was too busy finding your faults. Because to me, it seems as if nobody has seen your faults real enough. They have not looked at your faults close enough. They have not paid attention to the red flags, bitch. They have ignored all of your faults. They've ignored them and stayed with you is what it seems like. It seemed like that lady been ignoring faults and overlooking shit for years. And now whenever she wants to what? I guess leave you alone. Don't feel like being bothered. Tired of your ass. No longer pretending to be happy in this fucked up toxic situation. Because there are only so many years of that shit that you can take. I don't care what nobody say. Now you talking about go where you celebrated, not tolerated. Nigga, find a place where you can be celebrated long term and then come talk to us. Fuck out of here. I need to get that. That's the next sound effect I'm adding to this shit. The end of what more can I say when when Jay-Z just oh, fuck this shit and knocks the mic out. The, the, I need to add that. I need to add that. Okay. He'd be a famous rapper on a cloud with wing t-shirts, okay? The fact that we accept it calling this grown-ass man fabulous is outrageous in itself. Fabulous. Fucking fabulous. <laughs> okay, touch paws and feet. If he wasn't beating on her, he was cheating. Emily always had a sad face on like Fab had her in a full deep depression. He, Her dad and brother came to jump in and he pulled a gun on her. Yeah, I remember. I remember it was on video too. Somebody was recording the shit. Yeah, don't nobody want to hear that from you, Fab. Um, you and the rest of the toxic niggas that you came up with can take a seat. 
Nene. Nene is crying. And y'all, I'm about to have empathy for Nene. Let's listen. You know, maybe I should just marry whether I'm 100% happy with the person or not. Maybe I should marry just so that I have a partner. You know, a partner for life. Maybe it's the filter. I don't see tears. That's right. This is what happens when you're not good by yourself and you haven't figured out how to be good by yourself because you're always searching for a partner. And I really want Nene to never in her fucking life feel like you should accept marriage from anybody just so you can always have a partner, even though that's what a lot of women do. And... I was thinking about having a partner for life. Even though I know the person isn't right for me, I'm just thinking having a partner for life, at least there's someone, maybe we would have an agreement that this person would be there for me and I would be there for them. Doing uh, hard times or medical times or something like that. Nene, you got money, a kid, and access. And I say a kid because can't nobody depend on that oldest one. But I, I really feel like you really need to go on somebody's retreat, do somebody's therapy, somebody's soul searching, and figure out a way to take care of your fucking self. Even though I can respect honest displays of emotion because we all have different crosses to bear, we, as people, all have different traumas, different pains. But I feel all in all that this society teaches you to be codependent to a point where you think something is wrong when you have to be by yourself. And you would rather deal with abuse in relationships with fucking weirdos than to be by yourself and just learn how to enjoy your own company and some good sex toys and your good girlfriends and the relationship with your son. The one that's not on drugs. Like there are just so many other things like Nene really could be pouring herself into her content, trying different things, trying new things. You know what I mean? Like recording herself doing it, traveling. You have enough money now that you need to be doing shit, going places, trying to fill your life with experiences and recording them while you go create your own fucking reality show. Get you a person that you can drop a few bands on a month, take on you to, you know, vacations and record you and record what you got going on. Live your life freely and learn, learn something, bitch, because to still be in a space of setting up a camera to cry about not having a partner. It just makes me feel like you are really missing the blessing of having this time, this time to yourself to finally figure out who you are so that you don't have to live always questioning your decisions. And so she and I was throwing this conversation back and forth. And um, so we were throwing this conversation back and forth. And um, I feel like the reason why I want to talk about it because I feel like there's many women who would feel like, I know this guy is not the right guy, but maybe we are cool enough or friendly enough or we like each other enough where we, maybe we should get married. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Stop the fucking track. I want to be the voice in all of you women's heads. If you are not madly, madly in love with a nigga at this age, please don't play these games. I would even prefer for you not to marry. Why do you have to marry somebody? Why can't you date them and pay for insurance and, and, and put money to the side if you need a fucking nurse or something like that? Like, I feel like you need to, you know, invest in your health so you can live longer and you'll just, you know, die in your sleep like everybody pray for. <laughs> 
But at the end of the day, I just kind of feel like being fearful of death as you're getting older should not make you more thirsty for people because when you do, it's going to open you up for abuse. And I feel like her even getting online and doing this, crying on camera, should I just take any old body just so I'm not alone? Like you are basically whistleblowing to all of the people that are looking for women like you to take advantage of. And the last niggas you, you was with to me looked like one of those niggas that was looking for somebody to take advantage of. And I just feel like she... <sighs> She's putting herself at a disadvantage. She's doing herself a disservice. It's another time where a grown ass woman doesn't even know her own worth because if she did, she wouldn't be doing this right now. And we're just partners for life. But being partners for life, you know, kind of means that, you know, he will see whoever he wants to see. I will see whoever I want to see. And we will be there for each other during hard times. And, um, but doing that, you have to know that that person will probably be talking to other people and loving other You know, maybe I should just marry. Yeah, I, I really need for Nene to go get into some fucking therapy, um, to go on a retreat or two, to start a fitness journey. Bitch, start a natural hair journey. But do something that is going to invoke some self-reflection, some self-effort, some self-love, some self-care. Because I feel like what you're doing right now is, it's not self-love. It's really not. I feel like you're really attracting all of the men that are looking for sad older women to give dick to so that they can fuck you out of what money and prestige you do have at this point. And I feel like you don't have enough money and prestige to be getting with these old bummy ass scammer niggas that you seem to attract. But let's go ahead and hop into Shay because Shay decided yeah. that she wanted to go on live during taping of Love and Hip Hop Miami while she was getting into a disagreement with Eliza Rain. Apparently she bought a turkey baster to filming. Girl, it's, I'ma just say, the theme for this week is watching women go so hard to seek revenge on other women over minute things while allowing their men to wholly and unequivocally disrespect the fuck out of them without little to no, with little to no consequence. It's very, very male identified, male centered around here. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Here go the ugly right here. Future said the bitch is ugly as let me get out of here so I can get to this punk ass. Here go your pre. There go your turkey baster, ho. Yo, ho. There go your turkey. Hey. Come up in here. Come up in here. You look like Skeletor. Miss Turkey Baster, you look like Skeletor. Look at this ugly. Oh, I can see why Future One never claiming that baby or her mother. Future claim everybody but this. Look at her. Oh my God. Ugly. And she got a botched BBL. Now I ain't turning shit off. Got a botched BBL. Look at your One cheek is leaning. One cheek leaning. Your little ugly and orangutan looking. Oh no, not orangutan looking ass bitch. Oh no, we don't want to go down this Erica in a roll, Shay. Let's calm down, girl. Let's go. Get that hoe, I ain't getting off line. Cause word on the street is, Future made sure you wasn't getting shit monthly. That child's shit you tried to put on him, didn't work. Allegedly, didn't work. So this is what you need right here. Use this good old turkey baster to insert into your vagina for the next victim that you're trying to trap with a baby. It's giving Mama D. You know, Shay, just when I decided to give you credit and talk about how real you really be, you make a fool out of me, bitch. Thank you for making a fool out of me, Shay. Because you look crazy right now. You look crazy being mad at Eliza Rain behind this shit that your baby daddy got going on. Your baby daddy got bitches out here claiming that he gave you their Tesla, that he was already engaged. Your baby daddy got you in this mess. 
And because Eliza Rain decided she wanted to be the fucking radio by which your story made it to the to, to the show. You, or not even really, because they really pulled Tasha K's full clip onto the show in full HD 1080p. The production put it in. You didn't want to talk about it, but now you want to make Eliza Rain your storyline. Now you're going to bring turkey basters and props like Mama D and act a fucking fool so you can try to deflect from the fact that you with that plats wearing abusive weird ass nigga that you let talk to your mama crazy. She got a trap just to have a baby. You get at the house with our baby. Where your at? Future never claimed you. He called you ugly every chance he gets. How long did it take you to get him down here? Because we remember that you didn't want to tell us who the baby daddy was at first. He told you to have a fucking abortion, ho. On top of that, you all up in my business when you got... Just because he told her to have an abortion, what that mean? A lot of these niggas make y'all have these babies because they want to be able to come and have raw sex with your ass whenever they feel like it. They want to feel like you for them. Meanwhile, they giving their dick to everybody this, this side of the Mason Dixon. And the other side, bitch. I promise, get you don't even want to see that baby. I wouldn't want And that makes him a dog ass, disrespectful, fuck ass nigga because he still was out here having raw sex with that girl. Whether she used the turkey baster or not, he was having raw sex with her. And if a woman can get herself in trouble by being a hoe, why can't a man be responsible when he get himself in trouble for being a hoe? Ugh. I want to see the motherfucker either. Look at how you look. And Skeletor looking. Miss Turkey Baster, that's her name, because that's what she does to try to trick have a baby and it actually work with Future. Future, what you doing, by the way? Put a gag order on this hoe. Put a gag order on this hoe, Future. Put a gag order on this hoe. This is what she used. Fuck out of here. I ain't, I ain't getting off live. I ain't getting off. Let me out of here so I can drag this. Then I you lame as fuck right now. I get off live. No, I don't trust y'all. We on Love and Hip Hop right now filming. And they want me to get off because I'm blasting this bitch. Oh, breaking a four wall. With her turkey bait. They, they don't want you to get off because you blasting her. They want you to get off because you giving away the story before they tape it. Before they put it on the internet. I mean, before they put it on, on TV, girl. You giving it away before they put it on TV, girl. That's why. Hey, here you go. They here probably you still go. filming. Look, here, here go the ugly right here. Future said the bitch is ugly as Child, she a fucking mess. Continue. That just broke. She can't afford. She showed up in the Fashion Nova outfit that was thirty nine ninety five. Let alone her vagina is fifty nine ninety five to hit that puss puss. And y'all better be careful because she got the look. I didn't gave her her turkey baster for her next victim. I think it's weird when women talk about other women's coochies to this extent. I'm just saying. What's up, producer? You want me to call you back? Okay. This is my baby daddy. The hell he want? He probably trying to talk crazy too. I don't care. Yes, baby daddy. I'm on live. So proud that this nigga is just her baby daddy. I love you. I'll call you back, okay? Love you. Just as whack as you want to be. Love you. Love you. Do he love you is the question. I don't got time for that. Just trying to calm me down. Fuck that. This hoe want a problem. Let's bring it. This is love and hip hop, ho. We want to be on love and hip hop. So do you know this girl been trying to be on love and hip hop since day one? Love and hip hop Miami. But for you to sit on love and hip hop and talk about my dude and talk about some random, one of his many random. So you admit that he was fucking with this girl, one of his many random bitches. So you're now admitting that your baby daddy is a hoe that sluts his dick out to everybody. And so because of that, he got a lot of bitches that's out of control and you cool with that, right? You trying to marry a nigga that got many random hoes that's online telling Tasha K that they got a baby together. That seemed real respectful, Shay. Bitter and can't get over him. Using my name for clout, bitch. You keep my shit up, please my name for cloud to get an interview i was engaging him how you engage to a nigga that's been down here for seven eight months like there's no way there's nobody out there claiming this man when he been down here with me if you claiming the 
nigga that been down here with me for that long, you delusional and you need to be in the institution with fucking Miss Turkey Basis. Because he been down here with you, that means something. So that means he couldn't have been lying to her. That don't mean he couldn't have been going back to see her ever so often as if Memphis or Milwaukee, child, Milwaukee in, in, in Atlanta. Atlanta is a hub, bitch. That sounds like a two, three hour flight. Stop playing with me. You play with my daughter. You play with my dude. You play with my name or my brand. Who played with your daughter? Who played with your daughter? Girl, fuck your baby daddy. I'm sorry, but he playing, he disrespecting you and playing with you in your fucking face. And, and you sitting up here mad at this girl like it's on her. This You this old. You this old at this big fucking age. Holding a turkey baster in your car. Bitching out about to possibly lose a check because somebody brought up how your baby daddy is a hoe that, that's out here fucking on and having babies and being engaged to other bitches, even though that you ain't you ain't even wanna tell us that, that who he you didn't wanna tell us who he was, bitch. You ain't even wanna tell us who he was. I don't know why she ain't take her gift. I'm just gonna mail it to her in the mail. I'ma leave Shay alone, cause Shay is childish as fuck. That's why her and Von Shay friends, right? like let's not do that because i can air you the fuck out right now Sheesh. so von shay did this interview y'all and i'm not even gonna play the clip because i took i watched this interview y'all this interview was an hour and 47 minutes right so i want y'all to know that i love y'all and i fuck with y'all because i watched this whole interview and i made some notes so von shay went on the bay's podcast youtube page marriage or mirage with charmaine and neek bay um shout out to them okay because they've been getting a lot of really good interviews lately okay i don't know why neek is there <laughs> nah it's a good compliment it's a good compliment that he is there but Please. it low-key it low-key feels unnecessary sometimes because don't nobody let this man get a word in edgewise okay she says that richard lied on her when the police asked what happened when he pulled the gun on her he pushed a female neighbor who walked up on him with Snapchat recording. Um, and so she called the cops on him. OK, so she was kind of talking out of order. They started off talking about when he pulled the gun on her. So Von Shea started off this interview discussing when Richard pulled the rifle. OK, pulled the gun on Von Shea and her baby, which got him arrested, which got him put in jail, which got his his parental his parental rights taken away he at this point does not have custody of his child and can only see the child through this court appointed app uh talking parents that they speak to each other through okay so when the police were originally called after he pulled the ak-47 rifle on von Shea and her baby when she was trying to leave he stood there and lied to the police and told the police that she was the aggressor in the situation. He also previously, before this happened, okay, because we went back to the TV. Y'all remember the video of him bashing the television in, right? Y'all remember that. That came out after he got arrested, okay? And she released that video of him breaking the TV because he said in his police statement while he was standing there talking to the police on the body cam footage he said that she was the aggressor when he broke the tv so she then you know comes out releases this new information the video of him breaking the tv because he was talking about that situation when he got arrested for pulling a gun on her we don't know why okay but we have noticed that abusive narcissists like to blame other people for why they do the abusive shit that they do OK, so when he broke the TV, as we recall, she said that a neighbor that lived above them realized that they were the people on Love and Hip Hop came downstairs trying to remind Gunplay that they went to high school together. And she had her Snapchat on live when she was talking to him, which is so disrespectful to do to somebody. So he pushed the fuck out of her. If I, I think I remember this and I still felt like that was fucked up that he pushed that lady like that. But that's weird when y'all come in people's faces with cameras. Like, I don't, I don't like that y'all do that to people. That's very weird. Ask people before you start recording them or putting them on camera. Cause who knows what they're going through. They could be tweaking on a cocaine high and push your fucking ass across a parking lot because that's what actually happened. Okay. But y'all do anything for clout. So anyway, 
Um, she poured all of the liquor and Hennessy out because he was drunk. So she thought at this time, she did not know that he was back using drugs. She hadn't even, I think she said she had just found out she was pregnant when he broke the TV. He broke the TV, woke up the next day and was acting like he didn't remember nothing that happened. And that's when she started recording. She did not stay that night with him. She left. But when she came back the next day, he was acting like nothing happened, like a fucking crackhead. Okay. So Back to when he pulled the gun. When he pulled the gun, she was actually on the phone with Shay. And the apartment that they live in, the walls are not that thick. So the neighbors heard when he had the gun on her. And she was on the phone with Shay. And Shay heard what he was saying when he had the gun pointed on her. So once the police were able to add all of that information together, they arrested his ass. Okay? So she did not know until after the arrest that he lied to the police and said that she was the aggressor and brought up the whole TV thing, which is when she released a video of him breaking the TV. He had his best friend calling her, threatening her online, talking crazy to her for whatever fucking reason. We don't know. She didn't say who the best friend was, but she won custody of her child. Now they talk to each other through this parenting app that the courts record everything. And he's still harassing her on that recorded app. He's still harassing her. He will get off track during their conversations about their daughter and start blaming her. Then it's, I, you know, because he'll blame her for his arrest and say that she lied on him when we all know that she did not lie on him. He absolutely pulled a fucking AK-47 on her. Um, They actually took the weapon. The police took the weapon and said that it was loaded. So he pointed a loaded AK-47 at his wife and sickly child. Let's just start there, okay? So she was able to get a restraining order, but again, he's still able to harass her through the app, okay? Goes back and forth between blaming her and telling her that he loves her. True narcissistic abuse form, okay? He wouldn't stop smoking in the house. She says that at some point, their baby got sick and got an infection in her lungs because he would not stop smoking in the house. And so when the baby got the infection, they ended up having to quarantine for 14 days at the hospital. Because he could not bear to stay in the hospital for 14 days without his drugs, he sliced his hand. They still did not let him out quarantine. They spent eight days in quarantine and then he got out and went to Rick Ross's pool party while she was still at home with the baby who's recovering from the lung infection because you won't stop smoking in the house. Cool. So she says she fucked up. She admits that she ignored his red flags um, and that after everything happened, she texts her lawyer the next day trying to get a divorce. Okay, cool. He moved her stuff. She said she moved her stuff slowly. She kind of planned an escape her parents helped her with. And when he went on tour with Rick Ross, she moved out. She discussed the club situation. Y'all remember that was video footage of him throwing a garbage can at a DJ booth. Well, the D it was his birthday. The DJ wanted to, you know, I guess, play some jokes and some games that Gunplay did not take seriously and played 50 Cent in his club. Apparently in this area of Florida, 50 Cent is not to be played. So now he wants to choke the manager of the club. He wants to try to kill the DJ. He didn't knock the drink out of Von Shea's hand and he's lost his goddamn mind. Okay. Obviously, he was high, okay? Then she goes back to the night that he pulled the gun on her and the baby and tells us that he choked the baby. She says she was trying to leave, and he grabbed the baby because she's holding the baby on her hip. Y'all know how the girls do. They hold the baby on their hip. He grabbed the baby by the neck and was choking the baby and would not stop. She said when she backed away, he was still holding the baby by the neck and she was just beating up on him, telling him to stop, stop, stop. Because she said the baby stopped crying. She said he did not let go of the baby until she picked up a bottle and hit him in the fucking head with it. And that is when he let the baby's neck go. And her baby started breathing and crying. And she was like, OK, you know, but just scared that he had done that. He walks out of the apartment and that's when she grabbed all of her shit and ran and left. She said ever since then, it's been hard for her to find somewhere else to stay because people know who they are and don't want him destroying their property the way he destroyed her apartment. 
She said her mom's letter that her mom sent to him via email. Her mom sent that la- that letter to Gunplay via email because Von Shea had blocked her everywhere. Okay. Why she couldn't send Von Shea the email, I don't know. But I guess she felt like she wouldn't read it if she knew it was from her mom. So she sent it to Richard because she knew Richard would read it. And basically her mom was telling her she felt like she was making a mistake with him. This man has wished death on his own mother. And Von Shea explains that at a family get together, he told them how he hated his mother. His mother was fucking crazy and that he actually had hoodoo put on his mom and he hoped that she died. Then he also jokingly talked about how his father almost beat his mother to death when he found out she was pregnant with him. So Gunplay has had a very toxic, abusive, crazy childhood and family life. And so it's so weird that he took such attitude with Von Shea's mother over these comments about his family when he's the one that told them all of this stuff about his family. The jewelry. She talks about the jewelry and how the situation with the the jewelry he gave to Rick Ross really did piss her off. Um, Because he spent about $2,500 on fake diamonds to give to Rick Ross. But then when it was time to ask Rick Ross for help, he didn't want to ask him for anything. But it was okay to take help from her father. Yeah, that's how it normally goes. They're okay with you asking for help. But, you know, for them, oh, I can't ask another man for help, but I can live off another man. Gunplay has no idea what a real man is. And that is very obvious based on his actions and his lack of, of, of fucking priorities like really my dude you spending money on fake diamonds to give to a nigga that know they fake and don't care like don't need that that money could have went to your hospital bills that that money could have went to anything that you need for your baby but instead you want to put it to 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 the, the, the big titty nigga laying in his bed who knows that you giving him cloudy fake diamonds like that's ridiculous that's definitely a turn off and she said that despite What everybody has been saying about her, she is still going to Quantico. She passed two of her tests to uh, become DEA. So she's still trying to do what she's trying to do out here in law enforcement, regardless to how we think that she has squandered her opportunities by fucking with gunplay, child. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. But she also said that he's, he's blaming her for the reason why he can't come out with new music, saying that she stole the music. It was on his phone. Now, he has he has access to a cloud. So if he actually did have some musical notes somewhere, he would still have access to it via the cloud. <laughs> and so him trying to blame her for it um, is insane. But yeah, y'all, uh, Gunplay, Gunplay has lost his mind is what it's given. Gunplay is on that cocaína. He's lost his goddamn mind and they need to let him ride in jail. Oh, yeah, no, I think he definitely be on that hoodoo shit. I believe everything she said about that. And so then, you know, at the end, she talks about Amada. And she says Amada is fake as fuck. And they were really close, spending a lot of time together, helping each other with their kids, being there for one another. And that Amara is a liar. Amara has been having sex with Safari since before they started filming Family Reunion. But she did specify that... Uh, uh, Amara was not fucking with Safari when he was married to Erica Mina, but once they had divorced and he and Erica Mina was still fucking around up until February this year, 2023. So he was definitely fucking Amara and Erica Mina at the same time, even though it was after his divorce from Erica Mina. Okay. And she says her biggest beef with Amara came when Amara posted laughing emojis under a post that said it wished that Von Shea's baby had died. And Amara said that it was the crying emojis, but she doesn't believe it. Von Shea doesn't believe it. I don't feel like Amara would, would put a, a laughing emoji under pictures. Of some, I mean, under a video of somebody saying they wish your baby died, bitch. I think that's one of them situations where you really did misunderstand that situation. And you jumped off the porch based on you misunderstanding the situation and you refuse to see it any kind of way. You refuse to see it a different way because you want to be mad at Amara because that's the person you can actually like put all your anger on. You don't want to put all your anger on Richard's ass, even though you're talking about how you're going to make sure that he doesn't see, you know, y'all, y'all kid again. and He doesn't ever get custody again. Um, But she also like she's very vindictive. She says that Amara was messing around with some guy, some guy she found on the fucking street that came over here 
on on the boat you know what i'm saying came over here illegally and she had him taking care of her babies and they were out eating and drinking and amara's kids were running around and a guy went to go see behind her children in the bathroom and 30 minutes had went by and she's like amara where are the kids and she was like oh mommy can you go and see about the kids so it's like almost as if amara is being negligent and can be having any old body watching her kids and y'all i have said that amara worries me um with the way she can be. She worries me with her delusion. But I, I really don't want to believe that she has some random fucking homeless person off the street taking care of her two children. Like, I really don't want to believe that. I haven't heard Amara respond to it. Um, but this is what Von Shea is saying about Amara. And, and she's saying she called ice on the man. And so Amara had to hurry up and get him out of her house because Von Shea called ice on him. And I just kind of feel like, I don't know what's going on, but unless you had proof that that man was doing something inappropriate, that seems like a lot to me. I'm not a fan of y'all calling ice on people. Like, I don't care about y'all calling, you know, the police on the drug dealers that was, you know, selling drugs in y'all apartment complex trying to feed their daughter like, you know, Biggie. I don't I don't mind y'all calling the police on them because don't nobody give a fuck. Why are you selling drugs in front of my stoop, bitch? Um, you, you bring it down my property value. So, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't I don't feel bad for that but you calling ice on somebody and we don't even know if they did anything wrong that seems fucked up to me she also talks about how many abortions and plan b pills Amara has taken and once again I don't care and I don't know why you care I think it's weird when women worry about other women's pussies I also feel like it's weird when you try to use a woman being a hoe as a as a way to degrade her and make it seem as if you're better than her like that's just so weird to me um, essentially you are a 20 something year old young woman who has married a 40 something year old drug addicted, b drug addicted bum. You married him and had a baby for him. He pulled a gun on you and your baby and you were still trying to co-parent with him. Yeah. I, I feel like you don't really have any room to talk bad about Amara and whatever Amara is doing with her coochie because at least Alan isn't pulling a gun on her and her babies. But it's crazy the way you will go through such lengths in order to seek revenge on Amara for something that really seems like a misunderstanding. She also said that she gave evidence to Alan and his wife about Amara and her having the immigrant, illegal immigrant, immigrant watching her baby. I just kind of feel like I would really hope that that's not what Amara is doing. But I think that's really fucked up that you would do that. <laughs> like, I'm going to just keep it a book. I'm going to keep it a book. Whatever that baby should died waiting on you to pay that surgery. Envy was right. Why ain't it dead? Oh, my God. And then she put the laughing emojis. Y'all, I really don't want to believe that Amara did that on purpose. I really don't want to believe that Amara did that on purpose, y'all. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't want to believe that Amara did that on purpose. Oh, my God. Because that's definitely the laughing emojis. And that's definitely you adding the person that said that shit, Amara. Ooh, that's real fucked up, Amara. Ooh, girl, I need you to explain. Because why didn't you delete it? Maybe she did delete it. I don't know, but that's uh. That's real uh, girl. Uh, Amara. Uh. I don't think she did that on purpose because that's just not good for that lady brand. That's not good for Amara's brand in no way, shape, or form for her to have like evidence of her laughing at somebody saying somebody baby should have died. That's crazy. Y'all hoes is crazy. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't want to believe that Amara did that on, on purpose or intentionally. But at the same time, I don't really know Amara like that. And Amara do be giving fake ass tees. Like she said, Amara is fake as fuck. And I agree. I do feel like Amara is fake as fuck. I think Amara pretends to care about people and she really, really don't. But I also feel like Von Shay, you and Shay have it in common that y'all will go to the ends of the earth to seek revenge on a woman for something that is seriously not that deep. But when it comes to these niggas, you will let them abuse, use, disregard, disrespect, and publicly humiliate you without a problem. So, yeah, um, congratulations, y'all playing y'all selves. <laughs> congratulations. You continue to play yourself over some dick so sad it's so sad girl so sad